Hello, hello, and welcome to another update video about ETH. Yeah, ETH also saw that rally today, um, most of which retraced again. I think all of it retraced again. And um, since that retracement to the downside, we're going to take a look at that on the shorter time frame in a minute. We have seen slight upside again, which was expected in a corrective rally. So we're going to take a look at that also in a minute. Just want to show you the daily chart first to just make sure you understand that nothing really changed here on this chart. You can still see that um, we're counting the move down as a correction, basically a WXY correction. I mean, can I rule out that the low is already in it, by the way, would have to be in here. Um, can I rule it out? No. Do I have evidence for it? No. So it would be simple speculation, which um, is okay, you know, but we always have to be you know, have to base our chart analysis on the data we have on the evidence. And for now, the trend is still down. The daily trend is still down. And as long as the daily trend is still down, we have to go with the trend. Yeah, don't fight the trend. Um, the trend is your friend only as long as you respect it. However, yeah, you don't want to be fighting the trend because you think something's going to happen. We have to identify the trend and we can only see an uptrend starting when we have five waves up and three waves down. Now on the daily chart, the trend is up, okay? On the daily chart, the trend is up because we had a five wave move up into the August 22 highs, three waves down, a higher low, five waves up, three waves down, a higher low, five waves up, three waves down so far, okay? Um, this can also be counted as all of it as a wave one and wave two, but that's not so important right now. Important is that the move down looks corrective and the trend here overall is up. But since April, the trend has been down. So it's always a matter of perspective. But overall here, you know, we see this as corrective pullback and you see how the volatility seems to reduce as well. We're now still caught in this range between support and resistance. And the B wave can certainly extend higher, no problem. What we need to see is evidence that a low is in we need to see five waves up and three waves down. So we don't have the five waves up yet, which is why we have to be very skeptical about any rallies to the upside. So let's go to the shorter time frame. So now this is the one hour chart. Here you can see the move down of the October high. And um, yeah, so far we only have three waves down. There are different ways of how this can be counted. For example, this could be a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. This wave four did get very high, but certainly did not produce five waves up. So I'm counting that as a corrective rally. Yes, it could be a wave four. It could be a wave two. It could even be a B wave. It doesn't really matter in the short term, okay? It will matter as we go lower from a target point of view. And if we get more price data, I will decide what I put here for now. I'm counting that as a potential wave four or two, but it could also be a B wave. So again, it doesn't matter. The thing is in all three cases, we would expect further downside afterwards. If we push any higher into this resistance, which goes all the way up to 1703, then we will have more evidence that this is likely a wave two. Um, a B wave should be finished and the wave four should be finished as well, to be honest. We think we see five waves down off the high today. The problem is they are not very clear because of it's just a straight line. So if it's an impulse to the downside after that uh, fake out rally that we had, then I would have to count the move down as a wave one. Okay. And the move up, which is now happening as a wave two. We talked about that in the last video that we have to expect a bit of a wave two corrective rally into the region between 1596 and 1627. This is happening now. Um, we're still pushing into resistance. And we'll see if we see a reaction here. ETH often likes to go to the 78.6 retracement in a wave two. So we'll see if we get there. Also, Bitcoin could still push a little higher. Um, then a third wave down should happen next. Now, if we break above 1627, then we go back into the larger resistance area here. And then again, this could just be a larger degree wave two, for example. But it's too early to, to focus on that. Um, very early. Yeah. So I think it's good to let the market settle a little bit. This move up currently looks corrective to me at the moment. I consider it as wave two of circle wave five to the downside. But as I said, this count could still change a little bit. But the resistances are clear. We also have structural resistance 
around 1662, which is very close to the golden ratio here. And above that level, we've got 1703, and then very important structural resistance at 1751. Now, what would I need to see to consider that a low has really been made? Very difficult with this structure, really, really difficult to really consider that. Again, we would need to have five waves up and three waves down. I don't really, to be honest, I don't really see a very clear pathway to that from here. I don't see a very clear pathway. We would have to um, see here the low that was made here on the 12th of October as basically the low of all of wave two, which is possible. You know, the problem I just have with that is that the move to the downside was just in three waves. I mean, you know, you can count anything that you want as basically five waves, but it just it just is more like a three wave move to the downside, okay? I would really have to make something up to count this as a potential five wave move. I mean, you know, if I'm, if you, you know, if, if you twist my arm, you know, I could, you know, I could give you a count that would be, that would, and I mean, you can, you can always find a bullish count. The question is, and that's the task of the analyst, right? The task of the analyst is to figure out a wave count that's reliable and that's probable. I mean, see, I could count this here as a wave one. I could count, for example, then an A overshooting B wave and C wave as a running flat. It's an absolute disaster because running flats often don't occur in a wave two. Um, and then we would say this was probably a third wave, completely unreliable. The move down would be a very deep wave four and then a wave five to the upside still to come. See, that's five waves. It's even valid from an Elliott wave point of view. Is it reliable though? No, because of the very deep wave four, because, because of a, a, a running flat in a wave two, completely unreliable. So this, I would never count that as a five wave move. Yeah, it's a valid one, technically speaking, but that's a very academic and very theoretical one. And you know, okay, if we get these five waves, then we can look forward to a three wave pullback because I would count that as a wave one, um, <clears throat> but I would probably still see it as predominantly um, a bearish wave count, you know, a bearish structure just due to the overlapping price action and the sort of incomplete looking um, downside. Still though, this is something to watch for. Okay, that's my update about ETH. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.